All right, so today we're going to multiply fractions. I know you studied fractions in the past, but the fractions we did are all positive fractions. Now you will deal with negative and positive fractions. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. So before we proceed to multiplication, we have four points to remember. These are lessons that we've learned in the past, right? When multiplying two factors, look at my hands. Same signs, positive. Different signs, different signs, negative. Okay, so let's write it down. Same signs will be positive. Just remember to multiply first the absolute value. Positive. Here it is what? Negative. Negative. All right. Now, when we multiply, all right, have exponents like this, but take note the base the base is negative only works if the base is negative and look at the exponent if the exponent is positive and even even remember if it's even they pair up all right so ne even though they're negatives they pair up it becomes what positive okay now if the exponent is odd like 97 odd okay because of the odd number the negatives pair up, but there will be a single negative. So, different sign, the answer will be negative. Okay, got that? Now, let's have more points to remember. And now, look at all of these uh, fractions on top. What have you noticed? The negative value is in the middle. The negative value here is on top. The negative value is below. Are they really equal to each other? Yes or no? The answer is yes. That negative doesn't matter wherever it is, middle, up, or below, they all mean the same. Why? Because 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. Since the negative is in the middle, that's negative. 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. Right? Different, uh, different signs, negative. 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. 1 is negative, 1 is positive, different signs, negative. All right, so they all mean the same. So when you see that, you know they're just the same. Okay, next. Whenever you see off in word problems, for example, 3 fourths of the 1 and a half pounds of vegetable was delivered. That off means you have to multiply them. So that's going to be three-fourths times one and a half, okay? Now we're ready to multiply. So I will present five ways to multiply fractions in mixed forms. Sometimes it's a combination. Sometimes this may be new to you. Okay, so this is now method one. So the first one is NNDD. What do you mean by NN? Numerator to numerator, DD denominator to denominator. Just multiply them across, left to right. This one's easy. Check this out. One times negative three is a negative three. Okay, but remember, oh, Where's that negative? Does that belong to 1 or 5? It doesn't matter. Suppose I want it to be here, okay? Negative 5 times 4 is a negative 20, okay? But don't leave it that way. Negative divided by negative is a positive 3 over 20, okay? See that? And we already learned that same signs, look at this, same signs, same signs, positive. There you go. Next, um, again, multiply across. 3 times 3 is a 9 on top. And then 7 times negative 4, okay, is a negative 28. All right? So can I leave the negative below? Yes, it doesn't matter. Can I move it in the middle? Yes. Can I move it on top as 9? Yes, it doesn't matter. So this is the answer already in lowest terms. Question? We're good? All right. Method two is this one, something different. A while ago, there are single fractions. Now, if, if they are not a single fraction, make them a single fraction or it's okay to have an improper fraction. Okay, review of improper fraction. Two times three is a six. Six plus one is a seven. So I write seven over two. 
Okay, so same thing. 5 times 2 is a 10. 10 plus 3 is a 13. I write 13 over 5. Any questions so far? Then you can now multiply. Okay, multiply across. 7 times 13 is 91. Okay, 2 times 5 is a 10. Okay, but remember, 1 is negative, 1 is positive. Therefore, you know that the result will be negative. Different signs, negative. All right. Next, that's an improper fraction. Actually, you could leave it that way, but if your teacher is strict, they want everything as mixed form. How many 10s can I get in 91? I can get 9 and a remainder of 1 over 10. Don't forget to write your negative, though. Here you go. Okay, next. So again, change this to improper. That becomes 5 times 2, 10. 10 plus 2. Remember, times first, then plus. So that's going to be 12 over, same denominator, 5. Negative, don't forget the negative. Times, 5 times 4 is 20. 20 plus 3 is 23 over 4. Okay, any questions so far? We're good. Now we're going to what? Multiply them, all right? Multiply them from left to right. Oh, but remember that's a negative. So multiply them left to right, left to right. So that is, let's do some work on the side for our multiplication. 12 times 23, that is a 6, 4, 0, 2, 3. Let's add it up, 6, 7, 2. 200, 276, okay? Over what? 5 times 4 is 20. 20. Negative times negative is positive. You could leave an improper fraction if you want to convert. How many 20s can I get in 276? So divide it. 276 divided by 20. I can get 1. 20. 76. I could get 3. That's a 60. So that is 16 over 20. All right, 13 and 16 over 20. You could reduce 16 over 20 as what? Divided by 4 is 4. Divided by 4 is 5. And 4 fifths. Okay? So remember, it is positive. Okay? Next, we're ready to move on to the third method. And now for the third method, you have to simplify first. Now, don't be scared of this. This is just like getting the lowest terms, all right? This is just like getting the lowest terms of the following. For example, two-fourths. Oh, I could think of it as divide by two, divide by two. That's just one half, right? Okay, what else? Oh, you cannot just uh, simplify the top and bottom of uh, one single fraction. You could go across. For example, I could simplify this 24 and 6, right? Divide them by what common number? 6. Yeah, I could divide it by 6. You're now a 1. Divide by 6, you're now a 4. Okay. Anything else? Up and down. Think of a number up and down. For example, this 12 and a 9. I could divide it by 3, right? 9 divided by 3 is a 3. 12 divided by 3 is a 4. What else can I simplify? Oh, that one. The 4 and the 4. Yes. Divide by 4, you're a now a 1. Divide by 4, you're now a 1. There's nothing else to simplify or to cancel. See this? This has made my life easier. Why? Because I can now multiply 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1 on top. Again, numerators to numerators. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 1, 6. There you go. So, you're making your life easier by simplifying first. Oh, by the way, we forgot. Since there's a negative there, neg positive and positive is a positive. Positive times negative is a negative. Don't forget that. Okay, next. 
let's now do the second one let me use another ink here what can i cancel look at let's see the 8 and the 12 yes divide by what one on top one below remember anywhere as long as it's from one on top so divide by four you're a two divide by four you're a three what else can i cancel how about top and bottom top and bottom the five and the ten yes i could divide by five you're a one divide by five you're a two okay what else can i cancel that two and that two yes divide by two divide by two you're a one divide by two you're a one okay what else can i cancel top and bottom no more so look at the top numbers two four times one times one is equal to four all right next at the bottom i got a three times nine is a 27 27 times one is 27 now don't forget look at the sign negative and negative becomes a positive positive times that positive you know this is positive so it is still a positive okay got it that's method three now the next method is distributive property now you might want this method now check this out since you know you have the same sign your answer will be positive right positive so you can now ignore those signs just think of it as positive later on so think of this as four times two plus one half you simply separated the two and a one half okay so therefore when you do multiplication over addition remember the distributive property remember we learned that before so that becomes what that becomes four times two and then on the other side when you distribute four times one half four times two is an eight what is four times one half it's just think of it as half of four what is half of four two okay what do you do with the two add them up so your answer is 10 we identified the sign already it's a positive 10 all right let's try another one let's try the second one think of it as three times and then write five plus three fourths then i could do my distributive i could do my distributive you know that one is positive one is negative you know your answer will be a negative right different sign negative so three times five you know that it's 15 write it down and then three times three fourths you could write it as three times three nine over four nine over four remember you have to add them okay so what is nine over four 9 over 4 could be written as, okay, we change 9 over 4 as a mixed form. How many 4s can you get in 9? You can get 2 because that's an 8 with a remainder of 1 over 4, okay? So can I add it now? Yes, 15 plus 2 is 17, okay? And then add your half, I not to half, but 1 fourth. There you go. So the answer is negative 17 and 1 fourth. Got it right? The last method is estimation. You use this when uh, you don't need the exact answer. You just need to get a, you know, a rounded answer that would describe what you wanted to know. For example, to think of 2 and 7 eighths. Look at this fraction 7 eighths. 7 out of 8 parts, you're already at 7. You're almost almost the whole thing so if this is almost the whole thing seven eight is almost one so how many holes do i have now i have three okay i rounded it up and think of it as three i don't want to think of that fraction next i multiply three by okay negative two and two fifths now look at two fifths i don't want to work with two fifths now two fifths is almost 2.5 right 2.5 out of 5 like 
you know, you know, is is it half? Is it more than half? It's almost half, right? Yeah, it's almost half. So I could say two and a half. Okay. So now I'm multiplying three times two and a half. Okay. You could do your distributive property if you want. Let's do our distributive property. Oh, we already know that the sign will be what? Different sign, negative. So let's put that negative there. So let's do our distributive property. 3 times 2 is already a what? 6. What else? 3 times half. Half of 3 is what? Half of 3 is 1.5. Okay? So what we know, it's already a negative. Add these two. So our answer is negative 7.5 or 7.5. Okay? You could also write it as negative 7 and 1 half. Okay, we're good? So round it up first. Okay, one more. 3 and 1 eight. You know what? This 1 eight is insignificant, right? It's not that big. So if you're lazy, you can think of it as negative 3. All right, next. Times 5 and 24 over 100. Ooh, that looks big. No? Is it really looking big? 24 is almost 25. Compare 25 to 100. How many 25s can you get in 100? 4, right? So it's like 1 fourth. So think of it as negative 5 and 1 fourth. Because 1 fourth is easy to work with. All right, since it's a negative and a negative, you know your answer will be what? You know it's going to be positive. So ignore the signs now. And you can now multiply if you want distributive property. 3 times 5 is 15. All right, 3 times 1 fourth. 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourth. Okay, next I add it up. I get, I don't need to add it up. They're now together. So the answer is 15 and 3 fourths. Okay, got it? So those are the five methods in multiplying.